Greetings. I am Peter, and these are my teammates, Alex and Sam. We are the Galactic Hamsters, and we come to you today from a hamster hole far, far away. Up here, to know how to be exact. Now I give you the second member of our team, Alex. Hello, I'm here to talk about why we chose our project. We chose it because we wanted something fun and interactive, and we also wanted to experiment with having uh, robots work in a cooperative fashion. Back to Peter to explain the game. This game plays like tag, but with robots. One chasing bot, essentially it in tag parlance, chases around two hamster bots, hamsters rolling around inside, excuse me, robots rolling around inside hamster balls. You have 30 seconds to control the chaser bot and chase down the hamster bots and deactivate them using this flashlight. To explain the specifics of our robots and how they work, I give you Alex. Hello, I'm Alex, and I am actually the head designer for the hamster bots. Now, the hamster bots are robots inside the hamster balls, clearly. This is the hamster bot. It has a central axle, so it can, um, so the motor here can turn, can rotate the ball so that it will move. The other, there's another motor also in it that turns the brick from side to side so that the ball has the turning capabilities. There are also two sensors in here. One of them is a light sensor for use with the chaser bot for deactivation. And the other one is an IR seeker, and it reads where the IR beacon is, and it will figure out where the IR beacon is, and it's programmed to run away from it. There's one other robot that's attached to this. This is the master brick for the Bluetooth device, and it's attached to both of these slaves. This, the purpose of this brick is to set the level of the game, and also to tell these two robots to go. The next person on our group is Sam, and he can explain the other bots. This is the chaser bot. As you know, it has a flashlight to deactivate the hamster bots. It also has an infrared beacon on the back, which tells them to run away. It's driven with two motors that are controlled by the controller. It also has a color sensor to read these colored dots, which gives you more time. The controller itself has two motors, one for power and one for turning, and also a touch sensor for uh, speed boost which is incomplete. Now we'll demonstrate how it all works together. Alright, so what I've got going on here is I'm going to push this orange button after I've pushed one of the side buttons for, to set the level. I'm pushing the left button, which is the easy mode, and as soon as I push this orange button, they'll go. Ready? Go. And they're off. But Notice the here coming from the chaser bot. And the chaser bot telling us how much time it has left before the game is over. Every second it goes by, the total will go up a half step. Wait. And you don't want the tone to get too high because that means you're going to get a turn. And yes, it's just felt the blue pressure ball. And the yellow answer ball is not moving. It's cornered. And it's running away. It's not. Out of this way, <laughs> and it's yes, we stopped the elephant's ball. Congratulations, Sam! You just won. <laughs> Alright, so there are two ways to go about doing this program, to starting these balls. The first one is that I can start them with the go signal. That beep you heard is the go signal. So now this one's, this ball is clear for takeoff. All you have to do is turn on the beacon. This one's the light sensor. This one is the IR seeker. This is the motor that moves the brick to and fro to turn the ball. And this motor is the one that turns the ball. There's a frame that fits exactly inside the um, opening of the ball. All I have to do is remove these two sensors to slide it in and out. 